Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program Business Time. This is a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And in the program today we speak to some farmers discussing prospects for the next production season as fears engulf regarding the El Nino weather pattern. And also in the program we speak to Malawi Stock Exchange Chief Executive Officer on impact of the recent 44% devaluation of the kwacha. That's inside Business Time. Ensuring and saving with Old Mutual means growing crops, growing jobs, growing a future. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all. And welcome, this is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumembe. In our main story in the program today, Malawi remains an agrarian economy, but the sector's input to the GDP has been dwindling in recent years. One of the major factors include the harsh weather conditions, because if there is no drought in a particular year, then we should expect some heavy rains in some parts of the country. For instance, this year there are fears that the country could experience some drought as there are prospects for El Nino weather patterns. Now, how are farmers prepared for the next season at a time when almost all commodity prices are also on the rise? This is a question our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi attempts in this report. Small-scale farmers are grappling with the unsettling prospect that the changing weather patterns may cast a shadow over this year's growing season. The persistent uncertainty surrounding the weather poses a direct threat to their harvest, leaving farmers anxious about the yield at the end of the season. While the situation is disconcerting, many small-scale farmers find themselves in a precarious position lacking viable alternatives if the dry weather persists. The expectation is mixed because when we are about to receive rains, there are a lot of winds that drive away the rain clouds. So we look up to God and wait for what will come. But we hope for the rains. More important is for us to receive the rains. If it comes, the better. Also, we are yet to access the cheap farm inputs, and this puts us in a difficult situation. Climate change is real. At first, we used to plant in December, but now we are receiving rains early. Furthermore, we are afraid that we may receive little rains, not enough for growth of the crops. So we'll keep on following the weather updates. The Department of Climate Change and Meteorological Services has provided insight confirming that the weather outlook remains uncertain. Deputy Director Clement Boyce sheds light on the complexities of the situation. We said that uh, we expect the uh, uh, general normal uh, rain for across the country, but in some areas we expect that we're going to have below normal, that is uh, lower than uh, what is expected for that particular area, but in some areas it will be higher than expected. Now from uh, November where we are in into December we expect a bit of improvement in the rain for uh, performance into January, but uh, as we get to February, there will be a slightly expectation of a slight reduction in rainfall activities. And uh, we expect uh, that uh, when the season uh, properly starts, like uh, end of November into early December, uh, we are going to have uh, good performance up to maybe the, the, a reduction in February. But uh, uh, we should also expect that uh, uh, in January and February, Usually there are dry spells, but they'll be prolonged, especially in February. Yeah, so that is expectation. And there'll be a bit of a peak in March. Yeah, so a mixed bag sort of.
Adding to the challenge is the stark reality that smallholder farmers express they simply cannot afford the necessary equipment for irrigation farming. Owen Kumenda, Deputy Director of Agriculture, Environment and Natural Resources in Mzimba North, emphasizes the need for resilience in the face of these adversities, urging farmers to consider cultivating drought-resistant crops. What I have seen is that I think majority are yet to start preparing their gardens. So we see this uh, rain, which just fell over the, overnight, I would encourage the farmers to start preparing their gardens and also make sure that they have uh, the inputs, that's the seed and the fertilizer, so that the, when, the, when another rain comes, they should plant with that rain. And the, uh, to some of the farmers, what I have seen is that is they are following the agricultural, uh, good agricultural practices, so I would just uh, urge them to continue and also uh, teach others so that the, the whole catchment area has good, uh, agri good agricultural practices. We don't have any particular month of planting our crops but it depends on the amount of rain that area has received. Yeah, so we have uh, extension workers within this area and they know how much rain so that the farmers must plant. So what I will uh, encourage the farmers is uh, to consult the excess loggers available around this area, whether that particular amount of rainfall is enough for planting or not. Otherwise, if they just go planting without consulting the food excess loggers, mm -hmm. the, the, the seeds they plant may not germinate mm -hmm. at all because of lack of moisture in the soil. The focus for Ziba North from the MET department is that uh, we have normal to below normal. Yeah? But uh, they also continued that uh, in February we may have uh, a dry spell of a week or two. So with that focus, the farmers must go for air uh, maturing varieties. And uh, they should also make sure that they have a number of crops so that when one fails, the other one may, may, may do well. Yeah. So they should not rely on only one crop, but they should have several crops. And in terms of varieties, they should go for varieties which mature early, and also they should make sure that uh, they plant uh, sweet potato or cassava because these two crops do not need a lot of moisture. The looming threat of unpredictable weather conditions highlights the vulnerability of small-scale farmers and underscores the urgent need for strategic interventions to safeguard their livelihoods. Now, the Malawi economy has been faced with a number of challenges, including acute shortage of forex. This is despite the country having an insatiable appetite for imports, which has caused grilling mismatches between demand and supply for forex in the country. This has also powered pressure on the local unit, the kwacha, which was not so long ago devalued by about 45% for a reason, according to the Reserve Bank of Malawi, in a desperate attempt to bring realignment in the value of the currency. This has had an impact on almost sectors of the economy, including the Malawi Stock Exchange, where according to the Chief Executive Officer for the Malawi Stock Exchange, John Kamanga, there is more that needs to be done to bring some level of stability in as far as growth and sustainability is concerned. He caught up with our journalist Justin Mkweo. The necessary evil, so it was called, under uh, the private sector described it as much anticipated or long overdue. There were many words that described it, but it was the 44% devaluation that the Reserve Bank of Malawi announced on 8th of, no of November this year. A lot of businesses have, as much as they said that it was long overdue, but have felt the pitch of the devaluation, and more so the consumers who have seen challenges or prices skyrocketing. Now, the Malawi Stock Exchange has 16 companies listed on it. 
How has the devaluation affected it? Is there any effect? Is there any negative or positive effect? We are joined by the Chief Executive Officer for Malawi Stock Exchange, Mr. John Kamanga. Welcome. Uh, th thank you, Justin. Uh, when we talk of about devaluation, we look at uh, two aspects. Mm -hmm. Maybe first, let me start by defining what we mean by devaluation. Yes. By devaluation, actually, what we mean is that loss of value mm -hmm. of the local currency against other uh, hard trading currencies. Mm -hmm. In this case, loss of value for Malawi Kwacha yes. against the US dollar or the British pound mm -hmm. or even actually the South African rand. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at in terms of our market, uh, we trade using the local currency. Mm -hmm. So devaluation has got actually both the positive as well as the negative impact on the stock market. Mm -hmm. If you start, uh, for example, in terms of the positive aspect, yes. what it entails that with the devaluation, mm -hmm. it has brought in an element of competitiveness mm -hmm. of our products vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis on foreign portfolio investors. Mm -hmm. Because what has happened is that now our products in terms of shares, mm -hmm. they have become more competitive with regards to now the price uh, to uh, the foreign uh, currencies. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the foreign portfolio investors have gained the purchasing power mm -hmm. in terms of actually buying our local stocks. Yes. In that aspect, you find that at least because they have gained the purchasing power on our local stocks because of actually the loss of value of our currency, mm -hmm. that it entails that at least an increase in demand mm -hmm. for actually our, uh, our shares in terms of our local market. Mm -hmm. And because of the increase in demand, you find that at some point, actually, it will entail the increase in prices mm -hmm. of our stocks. Mm -hmm. And that actually will be an advantage to even actually to the existing uh, uh, shareholders mm -hmm. of listed companies because there's going to be um, a generation mm -hmm. of demand mm -hmm. because of actually the competitiveness of our products because they've become cheaper mm -hmm. in local currency compared to uh, foreign uh, currency, especially the US dollar or the British pound, or even the South African rand. Mm -hmm. And that, as I've already said, it is going to increase actually demand. On the same positive note, yes. especially on companies uh, which have got a, a foreign earning uh, uh, component within mm -hmm. their product and services, what it entails that even in their products, they have actually also increased their competitiveness. <laughs> In terms of international trade, it means that at least the products of those companies which have got a foreign, ex a foreign or an ex uh, a, a export reliant, a good example like Ilovo. Yeah. Ilovo has got actually an export reliant in terms of some of the, its products, especially the sugar which is exported. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in terms of actually the local currency, they have increased the competitiveness of those products with regards in terms of actually the local currency. In so doing, there is going to be an, a, a demand for those actual products in terms of actual ELOVO. And that would even translate with regards to their revenue generation and at some point even profitability, which in a certain extent is also going to actually affect positively on the prices of those stocks on the stock market mm -hmm. with regards to ELOVO. Mm -hmm. So that's actually the positive aspect in terms of devaluation on the stock market. Mm -hmm. However, yes. despite having that positive aspect, it has also a negative connotation, mm -hmm. especially to existing uh, foreign portfolio investors. Mm -hmm. You remember around October, we are around about 89, uh, uh, 90 to 90 to, uh, 80, 89 to 90% return on investments mm -hmm. around October. Yeah. Uh, you know? But what it entails that now with the devaluation of 44%, mm -hmm. what it entails that is now going to erode that return on investment if you convert now in terms of the hard currency. Mm -hmm. What it entails that as instead of having 90%, there would be maybe within the region of about maybe 50 or 45% in, in hard currency aspect. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumwebe. It comes to you, Keres of Odd Mutual. Kumalawi iti manena kuti chuma chili muntaka. Ndipo izi ndi zoona. Mutaku zoona zimene zipali ponse. Zina langa ndi Chris Gadiman. Ndipo ndi mayanganila banja langa po gwila nchito kugala Max Makademi ya Nat Farm.
Zonse zima ya mbila pa nazale pano. Tima samalila mpugila kutiti kwa nite kuzala mitengo ya mbili. Mitengo hii kakula, tima sanka mwente zaobu ino kwa mbili oka oka. Tima funa kuti nite zaobu makademi ya waku marawi, uzizu hii kakuti nduwa ino kwa obosa. Chiri jonse bafamu pano, tima kukila nchiro kuti zintu zizie nda buinu. Mitengo ya tu, ima eleta mpwea. Njuji za tu, zima tandiza mitengo kubele kazi batu. Ama ya mundela ama gorola uji mingoma. Ndipo ndala mazina zima tandiza sukuli ya bafa mubano. Tima puzita ana zose zoku zanteza wa magademia. Tika gorola kwa mbili, tima lemba so nchido wa ntuwa mbili. Ndima kala onyadila kukala na ote nga mbali mzimenez. From the soil comes endless possibilities. Growing crops, growing jobs, growing Malawi. Your money invested for the good of all. We call this creating mutual futures. Old Mutual, let's do great things every day. Welcome back. This is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country, case of Odd Mutual, and my name is William Kumwembe. Moving on with the program. Following last week's note by the International Monetary Fund IMF's executive board that Malawi has a $174 million US dollar four-year extended credit facility program with Malawi, there's been some positive response from development partners, including some countries, and the most recent one being the Israel government, which pumped in about 60 million US dollars for Malawi to cushion some of the forex supply issues that the country has been riddled with for quite some time. We caught up with Simplex Chichola Banda, who is Minister of Finance, to understand what impact would such a value bring about to the local economy. I know we have good news for Malawians uh, that the government of Israel has committed uh, 60 million US dollars um, to support Malawi's program uh, of economic recovery. Uh, let me say here that uh, this is a positive sign, an important milestone uh, for this country because the 60 million US dollars will now help us to procure uh, farm inputs, uh, fuel, but also medical supplies. Uh, so the three ministries will actually benefit from this. Uh, agriculture uh, are the first to benefit, and then uh, energy and, and health. Uh, people should also understand that these are very essential commodities and, and service provision. Therefore, we thought that we could use the 60 million US dollar from Israel in these three areas. Now, in other business news, Tanzanian High Commissioner to Malawi, Agnes Kayola, has reaffirmed her country's commitment towards enhanced trade and partnership with Malawi as a way of enhancing growth of the two countries. You're speaking when she toured a hundred million worth manufacturing plant by Pakresa. Uh, company in Blanta uh, where they intend to be producing cooking oil. Now, our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi was there and has filed this report. In the northern district of Karonga, Malawi shares a border with Tanzania, a crucial ally in facilitating Malawi's access to the global market through the port of Dar es Salaam. In recent years, this economic partnership has witnessed remarkable growth. Malawi's National Bank made a strategic move by investing in Tanzania, acquiring Akiba Commercial Bank. More recently, Bakresa Malawi Limited, a subsidiary of Tanzania's Bakresa Group, has invested a staggering $100 million in a cutting-edge cooking oil plant. Kayola believes that the momentum of trade and investment between the two countries will persist well into the foreseeable future. First of all, I'm very happy that I've got this opportunity to come and visit this huge investment which is being done by Barresta here in Malawi. Uh, as you know, Barresta is a big company. It has invested in various countries and in Tanzania also, they have huge investment there. So I'm happy as a representative of the government of the United Republic of Tanzania in Mal here in Malawi, I've got this opportunity to come and visit this uh, 
huge investment which has been done. As you know, Tanzania and Malawi has good relations and we are still strengthening our relations through trade, investment, education, and science and technology. So for us as the High Commissioner here, we have decided to come and see by ourselves so that to appreciate what has been done and to encourage more people to come and invest here in Malawi. Richard Chereko, Human Resource and Compliance Manager at Bakresa Malawi Limited, shares an update on the progress. As you are aware, Malawi and Tanzania have bilateral relations and we, in July we received a new uh, High Commissioner from Tanzania, Her Excellency Agnes Kayola, and we are privileged today to host her after she read about the massive investments which Bakresa is doing. She came to appreciate on her own, so we received her. As you can see, uh, the project is on the advanced stage. We are impressed with the pace which we are taking. As we committed, we expect to start our first production run come May next year, 2024. You see, this factor is a game changer in the agro-processing industry and manufacturing industry. We are hedging ourselves from forex. That's why we are using local available soya. Currently, we are banking on the uh, production of the country, which is about 300,000 metric tons. We are consulting, we are conversating with various players to, to see to it that we have huge production of soya. The yield must be increased. While this investment is a significant leap for Malawi, it sheds light on the state of the cooking oil industry in the country. Despite having four major refining companies, the sector is still in its infancy stages as these companies heavily rely on imports of crude oil to sustain their operations. Well, on that note, we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country, Keres of Odd Mutual. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Thank you for watching and bye for now. Brought to you by Old Mutual. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all.